Welcome everyone to the fifth episode of the Mets Ball Accelerator. Today we have a very special guest with us, Stacy Shropshire from Evolution Body Transformation. And today's episode is brought to you by Cast Clinical Consulting and Everable. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Stacy, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I would really love for you to kind of spend a few minutes, talk a little bit about your background, who you are, what you're currently doing, and you know, just, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm so excited to be here. I just, and I feel so honored to be, I know Cass has all these amazing clinics that she works with. I feel so honored to be in the first couple to be on your program. So um, anyway, and good job on my name. Yes. <laughs> no um, I got it. Yeah. So I, um, I'm actually a chiropractor and um, got into the med spa space from chiropractic, which is sort of an odd little transition um, I would expect for most people to think about. Um, but basically what I, um, so kind of growing up, my mom is, did a lot of modeling when I was little. She was really beautiful and slender and just, you know, this very fashionable woman in this small town that a lot of people took notice of. And she married a very large um, man, tall and strong, good work ethic of Norwegian heritage. And so I, um, I, I geared more toward my father's body type <laughs> than my mom's. So dieting and body image has always really been a big part of my life. And so when after I had kids, um, I really, I gained a lot of weight and I was just really unhappy with myself. And I just, as a provider, I felt like I wasn't even being a good role model for my patients. So I really, I did a lot of digging into my headspace and thought, you know, I've always been really um, good at getting things done. This shouldn't be that hard of a problem to take control of this issue. And I lost a bunch of weight and my patients really took notice and they were like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? I want to do that too. And I just had this thought like this you know, helping these people lose 30 pounds or whatever is really going to make a bigger change in their body than giving them six adjustments. Do you know what I mean? And so we integrated this weight loss program in, into the, the clinic. And from there, it just really blossomed. Um, people loved it. Um, they were asking me, well, now I lost all this weight, but now I have this loose skin, or now I still have a little bit of belly fat. And so we'd, I'd be in the basement with my family, and we'd be watching a family movie, and I'd be on PubMed, you know, trying to research, what can I do to help these people? And so we just sort of started integrating more and more of these services into the practice. And the more we did that, just the more excited I was about being in practice again. We really moved away from that pain focus into helping people just be the best person that they can be. And so what I think is really unique about coming from that space, you know, into the med spa environment is I feel like a lot of, most med spas are run by plastic surgeons or dermatologists, and they have this very specific well, you have this issue, we're going to force this therapy on your body to try and make a change. Like, I'm going to take this laser and I'm going to make a change to your skin. Versus from my perspective, we can say, gosh, clearly you have some inflammation going on. But what, what can we do to diminish your stress? What can we do to help you love yourself? What can we do to integrate um, different strategies into your, into your life to make you more joyful? Because yeah. those really make you look prettier too. And so I don't feel like... A lot of times people come into the clinic and they're like, it's so nice that you guys don't all look like the same person. You don't have like six Barbie dolls working here. You know what I mean? You're all different yeah. sizes. You're all different shapes. We're not all injected to the hilt. Do you know what I mean? And I just feel like it, we've created a really, I'm really proud of this space that we've created for people to feel comfortable and confident coming in and exposing their kind of the areas they don't love about themselves and feeling supported and nurtured and giving them some strategies to address it that way. Yeah. No, oh that's my awesome. gosh. I love that. I love, love how you described that. Um, people connecting with that pain that their patients are feeling. I, I believe everybody's kind of on the same journey with self-esteem and body right. image. Yeah. Some of us are two steps ahead of others and others are two steps ahead of us and all of that. And so really like that vulnerability that you shared that you identify with your patient and that deep compassion is the seed of success, I think, in, in any business. I remember yeah. the moment that it, that it kind of like the aha moment for me that I was like, because I got into my own business young. I was 21, but I had lost weight, much like yourself. I was like, you know, just um, with the... With the wrong things driving it, I was failing at losing weight and getting the body that I wanted. And I, I connect our physical 
appearance and especially what we see, you know, because our perspective changes day to day, hour to hour. But what we see and how we feel about what we see is really just a symptom of what's going on inside. Um, you feel beautiful. You look beautiful. Right. And uh, exactly. like look good, feel good, feel good, look good, that kind of thing. So I just, I love that story because I think um, sometimes in business, especially as business grows, uh, I'm spending a lot of time pulling data and looking at trends and patterns and market research and that kind of thing. And you, it, it's so important to stay connected to that why. I spend, when I do trainings, um, I spend a good four hours on connecting with that why. And as much for me as for my clients, my staff, all of that, because it's like it has to be a daily kind of reflection. Like, here's the purpose. Right. And, then, and then put the how together. You know, right. the how can come, the how is secondary. I love right. that. I love how you shared that. That was amazing oh, to me. I got you. you. Thank you. No, and I think... Um, you know, kind of when you talked about where like, kind of like the way that you've positioned yourselves and the approach that you take when it comes to doing these consultations, you definitely need to take that approach. And that's something that I know we've kind of talked about on the, sh on the show before, where you have to take that consultative approach and not just try to shove some type of treatment or procedure down somebody's, you know, throat, right? Uh, but at the same time, really hearing them out and taking a, a bigger like a, a more comprehensive approach really to how you're going to solve their problems because it might be, yeah, like, you know, they might need some type of medical weight loss treatment. They might need cool scoping or they might need some other type of treatment. But at the end of the day, the way that you're going to differentiate yourself from other competitors is by how you are communicating with that person and you helping actually solve that problem, not just like, Externally, which might be, yeah, getting rid of the stubborn fat, but the approach that you take in regards to how you're consulting with them through that process. And then what happens after? What happens after the treatment? And I know, Cassie, this is something like you and I have kind of been expanding upon, uh, you know, a little bit more where we want to actually build out some type of content or some type of program that happens after the treatment, like where it's, it's really more about mindset. It's more about, you know, reaching your goals, kind of more coaching. And I think, you know, it might be, it might be difficult for everybody to adopt, but I think there's some, uh, some level of that that you can implement in your practice to really help you set you apart and, and, and help people, you know, kind of build more trust and authority with people as you're consulting with them and all that. I think it's a, it's a, it's a um, dangerous game to play if you put yourself into a group of cool sculpting providers, Botox providers, we're selling, yes, a product, but our product is different. So how do you differentiate? Stacey, you actually have a unique position because it's very easy for you to di differentiate. You come from uh, a different perspective. So it's just naturally going to be uh, like to design a unique program for your clients where cool sculpting is a piece of it. It's right, like yeah. one of the ingredients in right. a wonderful program and making it a no-brainer for your client. You know, there are lots of cool, cool sculpting providers, but there's nobody who offers besides me the cast, my, cast mind and body synergy program right. and the cool sculpting is a piece of it. Right. right. So differentiating yourself, like I, I think it's really dangerous to go in because then you start price cutting. Then you start looking at what other people are doing as far as specials exactly. and discounts right. and playing that game. And you can't, I mean, that's a full time job. And if you offer the best savings, then you get the worst clients. Honestly, exactly. You know. Exactly. That's so true. Yeah. And so I so, guess what I, I oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go, oh, shoot, shoot. No, <laughs> go for it. I guess what I was just going to say was that I always feel like when someone comes in, the most important thing is to find out about them, what their goals. And then I always like to tell people, you know, I'm a relationship person. So what I want to do is I want to build a relationship with you. So over the course of the next however long you want to work with me, you feel comfortable and confident to come in and talk to me about your beauty needs. And it's a continuum, yeah. right? So with cool sculpting, maybe we take down volume in a particular area, but then we want to make sure that skin looks amazing, right? And then maybe we want to do some laser hair removal. And we don't have to do it all on next Tuesday. You know what I mean? We can budget it and we can plan it and we can prioritize it. And we can work through this, this service platform over the next however many months or years. And you can just keep me tucked away in your back pocket as your little super secret. And, um, and that, that's what I like. I'm about building relationships and not just... I'm going to sell you four cycles of cool sculpting. We're going to do Tuesday and peace out. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> All right. I'm going to challenge you here, Stacy, because as you do something like that, so that is exactly where the, the golden goose is, right? Like that is the magic right there. And I want you to look at it and just kind of sit with this over the next week or so. We can talk later. But if, because that kind of thing that you're talking about will make you uber successful. If you're the only person in your practice that can provide it, it's going to pose a problem and you're going to end up working, you know, five jobs again. And we kind of, you know, I, I see people vacillate with that. Like uh, they have this great idea and then suddenly they have six full-time jobs because nobody else can do it. Right. So as you're doing that, I want you to just be aware of what you're saying, what you're doing, write things down and try to systemize that. How can you, if you were to grow and have 25 people doing consultations all day, how can your hand and your heart and your vision be in every single consultation. That's my challenge to you. Yeah. And I'm going to, and I'm going to tackle something up on, on top of that. And so something that, that we really believe in that you mentioned was building relationships. And we really believe that in business, it's, it's all about that, right? Like I'm going to do business with people I know I like, and I trust. And if I can, if I can educate my market, then that is the fastest and easiest way for me to position myself as an authority, as an expert in, you know, with that person. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's, all, it's, it literally goes back down to that. And one of the other episodes I said, it was something that we say here all the time is like, stop advertising and start having conversations with people yes. because when you have conversations, you're going to build a relationship. And that is kind of like what Cassie said, it's going to make you uber successful. Now, what Cassie's talking about is systemizing it so that you're not always like at the forefront of doing those consultations, but you can kind of function more as an operator, as a manager, a business owner, right? Which is ultimately what every business owner should strive for. But one of the other ways, aside from kind of systemizing all those things and writing those down and training your staff, is that you want to leverage uh, we, we, we really recommend video. Uh, there's other ways of doing it. Uh, but you know, obviously with social media content, do, you know, writing blog posts, but video is going to be the big, the biggest one on how you get to kind of duplicate yourself without rally actually being there. And so what's going to happen is this, it's a, it's a really amazing once, once you start uh, doing it and it actually starts happening is that when you start making these videos, when you're educating people and you really just, you know, you're yourself, you're talking to them as the way you would as like you're doing a consultation, it's going to build this trust and they're going to get this feeling of familiarity with you to the point where they feel, you know what, I've never met this person, but I feel like I know them. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. I don't know if you've ever experienced that before. Like maybe you watch them, like you watch other people's videos and stuff like that. But like, you know, like for example, YouTube is so huge right now where people like are just like all people do is like lifestyle uh, vlogs, right? They, they talk about their family, what's going on in their day. Uh, and it gets to a point where like you're watching these things. They're like, man, I feel like I have such a great connection with that person. But in reality, it's the weirdest thing because that person's never met you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? right. yeah. But I get really messages awesome daily. That. Like, like yeah. I, I'm thinking in my mind, I probably got 10 people yesterday asking me different questions about different you know products services uh, skin conditions and so it, it the the amount of video that I've put out in the last two years has made it to the point that that's a full-time job now like that somebody helps me in that because it's true like people and that conversation it might not it's not enough it's not like hey you need to come in and get an appointment eventually it is but it's just answering questions it's just saying I'm here to help you you know, right. and uh, my door is open. And what that does for even your internal close rates and for your staff's close rates is incredible. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's a really great thing where like you get to duplicate yourself. You might not be able to consult everybody that comes in, but that's still okay because they know that you're behind that brand and whatever that person is, is doing and consulting ha has been, you know, is a part of you essentially, you know, it's, they've been trained by you. They, they wouldn't recommend something if you're not there. And then you, maybe you can make an appearance and say hi to them and all that stuff. Uh, and that, that would be like a really nice touch. But at the end of the day, it's about building brand loyalty. And that's what we want. And that's kind of like the shift where we're kind of getting to. And, and Cassie has really started to kind of uh, really pick this up. And well, I mean, you know, she was doing a lot of video before, but most recently now you said like, you know, we are doing a lot of social media content where it's just, I'm just going to put a video up like 30 seconds, you know, a minute, two minutes real quick, just educational because you're trying to build that brand authority. And that has been the biggest problem with people doing advertising in the past where it's like, Oh, let me offer a coupon to a right. cold market that doesn't even right, yep. know who I am. 
right? Of and course, then of the, the, the client that that grabs is not the client you want, you know, right. like yeah. that, yeah. you, you want to warm that client up before they come in the door, honestly. Right. And, and oh, the, the, other, the other thing that I tell people, the cool thing about video is that it's going to appeal to the people that like you as a person, which ultimately will be your best clients. Because again, if they like you, then they'll probably keep continue to do business with you, right? Sure. And it's gonna repel the people that don't connect with you. And that's okay, because that's yeah. what you want. You don't want those people in your practice anyway, you know? Yeah. Like, and so it's, it's really, it's, it's something that's so simple. Uh, it's a little hard maybe to implement, but, that, but it, you know, it's simple and it makes a total difference. And that's what we're trying to get all our clients to kind of switch to where it's like, we want them to do video. We want them to put out education out there. We want them to build authority with their marketplace so that beyond that, like we can do the direct response stuff. We can offer the coupons, but it's to somebody who you already know, like, and trust. And that's really where the, the biggest yeah. game changer is. So when and I tell people, the hey. Biggest thing, well, I was going to say, like the, like, the biggest challenge with video is internal. Um, I still yeah. have it. I made myself do a video every day for four yeah. months. Uh, at the end of last year because it was all of this like anxiety beforehand and it's like I actually never watch my videos um, after I'm done I just post it and walk on um, yeah. because I stutter sometimes I say the wrong words sometimes I look really weird sometimes but it's about the message and this is and the sincerity and that yeah. magnetism of people who yeah. like me and really that repellent for people who don't like me keep That's keeping true. them yeah. away keeping yeah. those good reviews coming, keeping people who appreciate. And uh, honestly, just with a little bit of effort um, on social media platforms, it, it has created just so many conversations, so many yeah. people saying, what should I do? People that are buying skincare products without ever even coming in and meeting us, you know, it's, it's really opened up some stuff, but, yeah. but building you as an authority in your market and I, again, the, the biggest thing is, is fear. And I have clients who I will be like, go shoot a, shoot a short video. And, you know, at the end of the day, they have an excuse. And then four months later, they still aren't, you know, so right. really look at that. Like if you're really too busy or, you know, your camera, went, whatever, um, make yourself shoot a video. Yeah. It's just about being authentic, you know, uh, people want to see who you really are, your authentic self, because that's what's happened with advertising. It's that it's become this barrier of like things like this, this first, for, for example, for cool company, it's like, Oh, the, the skinny model with the like, that's really beautiful with the dress or the bikini and all that stuff. And like, Hey, you know what that, you know, yeah, yeah there's some people who look like that, but at the end of the day, it's not real. Right. You know? And, uh, and people want authenticity. They want real. And with the power of social media and where we are today, that's what people want. They want conversations. And they want something that's real, somebody who's going to be authentic and it's going to take the time to educate them. So that's huge. And guys, social media, like we're really still in the infancy of what this is growing into. So a lot of, I hear a lot of physicians, especially um, business owners, especially say, I don't do Facebook. Well, that's a real big mistake. I didn't know. I wasn't comfortable doing it. But if you don't get kind of rooted in this thing and understand foundations, it's going to take off and you're going to be so far behind that it is even more overwhelming. So really, you know, don't close social media off and think that it's just for kids. Uh, I, we got a, a client week before last who was 82 off of nice. Facebook. Wow. Everybody's doing this jump in and just practice. Everything's practice. You don't have to do it perfectly. Right. And, and she made a big purchase, right? Like she was, she was yes, $17,000. Oh, wow. An 82 year old. Yep. That's awesome. Good for her. Yes. Yeah. And she's so happy and she's in the, I mean, it's, it's just been wonderful, but you automatically think I, I hear a lot of this. My clients aren't on Instagram. They're on Facebook. Well, you know, you, the clients that you talk to that tell you what they're doing is a very small portion of your audience and the people who you haven't met yet, you haven't met yet. So it, it's no big deal to throw something on Twitter, something on, you know, just copy a, an article in the beginning about cool sculpting, just help. I, I always ask myself if I, five years ago, what, what message would I have want to hear, to hear, wanted to hear? Um, and just put that out there. It's almost like I'm talking to myself before I knew this stuff. Like, what did I find that was really cool? Share that. Okay. Yeah. 
So Stacey, so we want to challenge you to do some more video. <laughs> we kind of yeah. went like real deep in that. I've been hearing this. Yeah, it's time. It's time. I just, I, I'm just that. That's the holdup. You, you know, you just, you know, the sphincter yeah. response. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so, so take it upon yourself. I mean, like what Cassie was saying, like look at what the common questions are. Make make a quick video about that. You know, sure. it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um. So okay. So. Something else that I really want to touch on that I was really, uh, uh, like, uh, was really touched on, you know, we've always, we're really big on entrepreneurship, right? And we, and we really value like the journey. And I think most of our audience here, like, you know, them being business owners themselves, they're having their own practice is huge. You come from a very unique perspective where you literally opened up your own clinic at the age of 24. Tell us a little bit about that. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just, uh, my, what my best friend claims is because I'm a Leo uh, or maybe because I'm crazy or I don't know, but I just grew up with that idea that anything is possible. It's just, yeah. so long as I'm willing to put in the work, it can happen. So I powered through, um, I went to undergrad for physical therapy and then I powered through grad school and got my doctorate at Palmer college of chiropractic. And then I promptly showed up in Madison. I came here because my brother lives here and just wanted to be my family. And I just put on my best gray suit and I went from bank to bank with my business proposal until somebody gave me some money. Awesome. <laughs> I, I still just like I back and like, whoa, like, I don't even know if, you know what I mean? Like at 24, yeah. that's kind of, I don't even know if I could pull that up now. You know what I mean? But I was yeah. just really in a mission to make it happen. And I got my little space and, um, you know, I'm blonde and I've got boobs <laughs> and I was really young. <laughs> Yeah, and no. so um, I, I came in, I came into some challenges, just people didn't believe me. And I think yeah. just as part of my personality, I'm just bubbly and I'm going and I'm sympathetic and empathetic. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not authoritative. So I really had to work really hard to kind of develop that aspect of my personality. And um, I kind of developed a fake it till you make it persona that I can just now pop on and, and run with that really gives me confidence when I need it. But that, you know, you can still feel that it's still there. Like even this last Saturday, you know, some young ladies came into the clinic and they started, you know, we have both businesses here. So now my chiropractic business rents from my, my med spa kind of opposite of what it used to be. Um, but I have this room that's dedicated to chiropractic and they just came in and they were just, you know, just dumping on in, in my space. You know, it's, I have this beautiful clinic. It looks like me. It smells like me. It feels like me. And they just come in and they just, you know, eviscerate what, what I'm, and I just know it's coming from ignorance, but you just have to be able to kind of separate yourself from that. And you kind of have to think they just don't know. And that's why they're coming from this place. And I know what I know. And I know that I, there's a lot of things I don't know. But yeah. um, I, I think that you just have to be able to, I mean, it's still there. It's still palpable even <laughs> after all these years. Yeah. We talked about um, after we had a long phone call uh, when we were scheduling this podcast and we talked about this and I had you Google um, imposter syndrome. And I think I've mentioned it on a former podcast, but it's, I started my own business when I was 21. So I laughed when you said, you know, I don't know if I could do it today. And not quite honestly, because we've heard no now, <laughs> you know, like there's a right. great power behind being naive. Uh, right. Cause we didn't know what no felt like yet. Right. And uh, exactly. I, I remember going through the first God, probably 10 years thinking, I can't wait till I'm older and people start taking me seriously yes. because it this yes. huge objection that I had to overcome and I could see it on people's faces. But yep. what you got was the ability to overcome an objection and that empathy understanding, like what you felt from those girls that came in. A lot of people would just be naive to that. And what it does, although it hurts, I, I know how bad that hurts because your everything is right there in that clinic. It provides that a fuel to make it even better and a fuel to really define yourself without others uh, affecting it. So imposter syndrome is when you feel like you faked it this far. And if people were to find out, they wouldn't take you as seriously. Right. And honestly, we all <laughs> faked sure. it till we made it. You know, sure. there are 100%. many situations we walk into confidently feeling like, Oh my God, I'm going to pass out. Right. So it's very common in entrepreneurs. It's even more common in women. And if anybody has, has questions about that, just Google it. You can read about it. I bet you'll find a little bit of yourself in it. But I love the, the story because um, 
you know, being 24 and, and going for it, that right there, it, there's something inside you that says, I'm going to win no matter what. And no matter how many failures you have met along the way, which I'm sure there have been plenty. Um, it was just to you one step closer to success. And I, I said, I actually wrote an article yesterday. So go on my Facebook profile, my um, entrepreneur, Cassie Craig, and read this article. It says, uh, I think nine things we tell ourselves that are, are destroying some of anyway, nine destructive things. Read that article because you said a lot that was in there. And in there, I say wealth is not a prerequisite to success. It's the other way around. You were successful before you had anything. And I think identifying that is, is the beginning of, of really healing, understanding, being aware of, but then healing that imposter syndrome that you struggle with today. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, yeah. Thank you for being vulnerable with us and the audience. And I, and I think it's something that everybody can relate with. I mean, I know I related. I started my first business, you know, same 21. And uh, when, you're, when you're doing marketing and you're, I, when I first started, we started working with lawyers. And it's like, well, oh, what, is this 21, yeah. what is this 21 year old kid, you know, have to like, you know, tell me about, you know, like marketing and business and all this stuff. And it's like, but hey, like I grew up around entrepreneurship, you know, like I right. knew this stuff that I knew. And, and with, and that's uh, at the end of the day, that's a lot of what it is. Like it's experience, not necessarily so much of what, you know, maybe you learned in school or whatever, but literally experience. And that's all business is. It's like trying things, mm -hmm. failing, and then finding what works. And something that you, that I know you said before, Cassie, that I really struck a chord is like, you know, the people that are the most successful are the people that, um, oh, I'm going to butcher this, but you know, that, that hadn't figured out, but that figured it out, you know, like those are the guys that are leading the industry that are the most successful because you know what, they took a chance, they failed a bunch of times, but they figured it out. Everybody else is just kind of following. So, um, I, you know, I, I applaud you for, for taking the risk. Cause that's, it's really all it is. Like, you know, it really is just take, there's so much, right. Like getting a loan at the age of 24 to open up your own practice where at that, a lot of the times you don't know if you're going to be successful, but you know, you, you, you do it and you do it and you do it until like you get there. It's just really, really amazing. And that's an amazing trait. And I think that's what has really attributed a lot to, you know, your success right now. And so that's awesome. We, you know, we, we applaud you for that. Well, I think you about life. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I think you could put 10 people in the same situation like your life. If we placed 10 different people in your life, we would have one that said, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And the other nine would look at the problems. And so success is really defined by the person themselves. Like, sure. like your situation might be completely not successful to someone else, but it's that passion. It's that enthusiasm and you're enjoying life. And that's what this is about. It's about having fun, being creative, waking up every day and understanding like I can do anything I want with my right. business. And this yeah. is amazing. I, 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 I think you're one of the few that's found it, Stacy. Well, thanks. Yeah. Stacey, I um, guess I was just going to say, um, to me, you know, life is, you know, if you look at like a heartbeat, right, there's a, a wave to it. You know, if, if everything's flat, that's what death looks like. So you have to have the, you have to have the lows to feel the joy, right? You have to have the highs and the lows and that's, be able to experience yeah. that all. That's what life is. Yep. Yeah. Keep living it, girl. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. That's super cool. Well, you know, we're we're coming up to the end of uh, of our time here, and but I really want to leave off with, or you know, ask you like a final question, which is, you know, if you if if you were speaking to another entrepreneur, somebody, you know, maybe yourself, let's say ten years ago or something like that, they're starting off a business, or or you know, any any last piece of advice that you want us to leave our audience with, anything else that you know you'd want them to know to really help them through their journey. Boy, I guess um, I feel like I I have I love chiropractic. You know, I love helping people and I love wellness. But coming from the beauty background that I have. Once I put all of my stuff that I love together and just let my freak flag fly, that's when everything popped for me. And I think, yeah. I think there's just, if you can find your passion and find your niche and find your tribe of people yeah. that are like, yeah, that's super cool. I love that too. Suddenly you, success just, you know, it's like you're on the weekend and you're like, yeah, I'm having fun hiking with my family in the woods and looking at the leaves, but tomorrow I get to go back to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's just, a, it's just a different life and it's just so much more joyful than, Oh, I have to go back to work and conform to this idea that everybody has of what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. That is yeah. So 
Yeah, it's so big. Oh, um, I want to say, Stacy, that um, remind yourself next time you feel like someone is uh, judging you or, you know, saying something negative about your business, what other people say and what other, what other people think is none of your business. And you are in a very successful place until you allow that to come in. So watch That's that. True. And then my lasting um, advice to everybody is shoot a video. A hundred percent. That's my advice too. A lot. I want to combine what you said. Like I want to combine what you said. So shoot a video with, with what Stacy said. Be yourself. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't pretend to be on video. Don't pretend to be somebody you're not. Because when you're yourself, right. someone else will connect with that, and that is what's what's really gonna like the power of video. Being able to connect with someone, relate yes. with someone. So, talk about the fears. So, talk about the vulnerability. Talk about all of that. And people yeah. out there, that's what they're feeling too, and they'll love that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Stacy, if somebody wants to communicate with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch? Well, we're on Facebook. You can find us on Evolution by Transformation. Um, you can email us through our website. The email address is info at evolutionmadison.com. Um, probably the easiest way is to find us, I would expect. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I guess that concludes episode five of the Mets Ball Accelerator podcast. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Go to our website, MetsBallAccelerator.pro. And on there, you can subscribe and you'll get the, the episodes on your email every single week. And if you want to be featured as a guest, go ahead and check, check that little box that's on that form and we'll go ahead and reach out to you or just send us a message. And then uh, we would love to hear you guys, hear your feedback, whatever you have to say. So, somebody that you would want to have on the show you that you want us to have us to reach out to mm -hmm. or, or topics yeah. that you want us to cover uh let us know so we can you know guide the podcast put content that you guys want to hear um and yeah we'll just take it from there cassie do you have any last words nope that's it y'all have a killer week and we will see you next time <laughs>